Hey everybody, it's Lady B, and I have something to say. I got an on-time word for these end times. You know, I love talking about the end times. I love talking about uh, end times prophecy. But you know, while we live in this world, while we're still here, and our Lord has not come to get us, there are some things that we are going to experience. So I want to talk about briefly, what do you do when it hurts? How do you handle it when it hurts really, 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 really bad? This is more so going to be about me, and I hope um, what I share about me will help you. These past couple of days, and it just seemed like it intensified um, on today, it's been hurting real bad. Like, it's been hurting real bad. There are some things that I desired, I desired from a child, that for whatever reason, God has not allowed me to um, have them. Not material things. These are not material things, but there is a strong desire in my heart. That here I am at this many years old, and I can honestly say, I've never achieved it. There are many times when I felt like I had it and it was like sand flowing through my fingers. I, I there, It was it was not there. What I thought was there was elusive. And so it hurts. You know, sometimes when God tells us no, it hurts. Maybe that's what I need to, to um, name this, when God tells us no. But how do you deal with the hurt? of what this life brings to us and that God has not um, chosen to bring relief. Just like we think about like with Paul, when he said he thought he, he um, sought the Lord three times, he begged and pleaded with God and God said, my grace is sufficient. And I have to be honest with you. That's what I feel like God is saying. I want to look at this Psalm 22. I'm going to read it real quick and I'm going to point out some things. How do I deal with it? Things when it hurts, when it hurts real bad. I got to be honest with you. I'm hurting right now, but you know what? I love God. So let's look at this Psalm, Psalm 22. I'm going to read a little bit of this out of the new international version. David, the Psalmist says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night and am not silent. So he's saying, God, I've been begging, just like what, what Paul said. And it's like what I've been doing. God, I've been begging, begging you. And in the daytime, I cry out to you. At night, I cry out to you. And it's not. It's like you are not there. And I'm sure you know what that's like, how you feels like your heart is hurting so bad. It's going to burst out of your, your, your chest cavity. And it's like God is nowhere to be found. But look at what David said. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. Now, in the King James, it says you inhabit the praises of, of, of your people. I want us to know, people of God, what's the first thing that I do? What's the first thing that I do? Even when it hurts real bad, I remember who God is. Is. I have to remember who God is. I have to remember that he's God. He's the creator. He's sovereign. And in Deuteronomy 32, 4 says, and everything he does is good. He didn't say everything he does, we're going to like it in our humanity. But I choose to remember that he is God. And then I choose to bless him. I choose to praise him. I was telling a sister on Sunday that, you know, when I'm really going through, I, I give an extra praise. I, I, I cry out. I let the tears flow and I lift up my hands and I open my mouth and I bless God because I know God is good. And when I praise him, that's what I say. God, you're good. I know you're good. I know you love me. I know you care. I know that you see me. 
Um, they cried to you and were saved. Listen, and, and you, our fathers put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not disappointed. Okay, here's the other thing, people of God. We have to learn from other people. This is why it's not good to be isolated, especially when we're going through because our strength oftentimes is going to come from others who have made it through. And then when you don't feel like it, mimic what they're doing. Praise like what they're doing. Stand strong like them. But the enemy loves for us to be isolated. He loves for us to feel like nobody understands and nobody cares. But I'm here to tell you, the Bible is right. There is nothing new under the sun. And regardless of what has your heart heavy, on what has my heart heavy? Somebody has gone through that before. And the psalmist is saying, our fathers trusted you and you saved them. And so what am I going to do? Remember what I saw. I remember coming up in church and the saints believe in God, trusting in God, testifying of the goodness of God. And so that's what I'm going to cling to. Even when I don't feel it, even when I don't see it, I'm going to remember can you do that with me? Remember, even when it's hard, can you testify that God has abandoned you? You may be able to testify that God did not give you what you wanted, but that's not the same thing as he abandoned you. Abandoned you means he left you to yourself. And if you belong to God, he has never left you to yourself. God has never left me to myself. He does not always give me what I want, but he's always there to comfort me when it hurts and the tears are falling. And there are times when I get on my knees and I can't pray because it hurts so bad, but I still feel the comfort of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, letting me know that he's with me. Even me sharing this is part of my comfort, letting someone else know that even in the midst of pain or of fear or adversity, a struggle, of dark time, of a storm, of or winds that are blowing, he is still good and he is still there. Then the psalmist begins to talk about how he's a worm. That's and a man. He's scorned by men and despised by the people. All who seek me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. Now, this is what I think about. The psalmist is talking about people, but I think about how the enemy loves to taunt us. He loves to harass us. Where's your God? How come he's letting you go through this? I thought he said he loved you. I thought you said he was a good God. See, I told you, you shouldn't serve him. You shouldn't wait on him. Look at it. He's taking too long or all this pain. What kind of God would do that? That's the mocking and the insults that we get a lot of times. They'd say he trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Why hasn't he healed you? Why hasn't he provided? Why hasn't he saved your loved one? Look at you. Why hasn't he healed your heart, Miss Lady Tara B. On time word. Where is your God? Let me tell you where my God is. He's everywhere. He never sleeps and he never slumbers. But you know, sometimes what makes this pain and our heart so intense is the mockings because you feel like you have no answer. You feel like your throat is being strangled or your tongue has been snatched out and you have no answer. And I'm going to say it again. This is why it's so important not to isolate. This is why it's so important to be a part of a body of believers. I know so many people now, this is why I don't go to church because church is this and church is that and church is this and church is that. Notice what I said. Find yourself a body of believers, true believers. A lot of these buildings that we're going to, they're full of people but they're not true believers, but true believers don't do the things that we're seeing happening in church. And then look what the psalmist said. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. What is David saying? God, I know you. 
this desire, this heart that I have, you gave me that. I was born with this. And people of God, I'm going to tell you, I can't say I was born with it, but I was called from a very young age, very young. I was about nine or 10 years old when I first gave my life to the Lord. And I remember, and I know people don't do this now, but I remember tearing for the Holy Ghost. I wanted the Holy Ghost. I remember being 10 years old and we were getting ready to go to revival. And I went to my mom and I said, mom, how come I haven't gotten the Holy Ghost? And mama said, you have to give up the world. Now at 10 years old, I didn't really know what give up the world was, but as we drove, because everywhere we drove to was about an hour to get to church. As we drove, I made up my mind, I'm going to give up the world, whatever that meant. And listen, I understand doctrinally, I, I'm, I'm more mature now and I understand, but there was something about being at that altar. And some people called it the mourner's bench. There was something about being at that altar, even at 10 years old and crying out, mm, and crying out to God, I wanted him, I wanted him, I wanted him. And that's what I think about here with the psalmist. And that's another reason why that no matter how much my heart hurts, I choose God because I want him. And I feel like this psalmist from birth, even when I was being cared for, God, you put this desire in me. God, you put this longing in me. You put this love for me for you in me. God, you put this in me. And so the psalmist just goes on that how what he's going through, the dogs have surrounded him. He said, I can count all my bones. People stare and glow over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. And I know we're very familiar with that prophetic word. We know that is about our Lord. But this psalmist David was feeling that too. That, I mean, the people, they take in everything. And sometimes, like now, I feel like life, I just, oh, it's been rough. God, why? I see other people and you allow them to have it, but why won't you allow me to have it? Can I at least get an understanding or an explanation? And I can't even tell you that God has allowed me to even get an explanation. I can't say that. He says, but you, O oh Lord, be not far off. Oh, my strength, come quickly to help me. Look at what the psalmist says. God, you're my strength. I'm feeling low. I'm feeling abandoned. Um, my heart is heavy, um, and tears are streaming down. But, oh, God, oh, God, you are my strength, and I'm calling on you. I'm, I may not understand everything, but, God, you are my strength. Deliver my life from the sword. Deliver my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horn of the wild oxen. So do you all see this imagery here? This is some strong spiritual warfare. And that's what I feel like I've been in. Some intense warfare. Listen, this is why we need to be part of a body of believers. Early this morning, I got a recorded message and somebody, got, they sent a message saying, I've been praying for you and I want to pray for you now. Listen, none of us are going to make it by ourselves. We need the body of Christ. We need people that are committed to us, committed to what God has called us to do, that will stand with us, that will pray with us. Some of us, we may need financial support. We may need prayer support or whatever it is, but God will send it. And sometimes, you know, we've been hurt so deeply that we're just cutting everybody off. But I want us to look at what the psalmist did. The psalmist believed God. The psalmist said, I'm going to learn from my forefathers. The psalmist remembered that who I am, God, you made me this. The psalmist remembered that God was his strength. The psalmist was honest. God, I'm struggling right now. God, I'm, you're, I don't feel like you are there. You know, a lot of times, Especially if we, have, if we have titles. We walk around here like we got it all together. Listen, if you are a human being and you breathe in and out, there are going to be times that you hurt. 
that you may be ministering and people don't even know it, that you are praying for people for the very things that God has held back from you. This is why everybody's not fit for ministry because sometimes it's very painful. But look at what the psalmist says. I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Rever him, all you descendants of, of Israel. So as I close this, if you are like me, and right now life hurts real bad, you want to know how you deal with that? You be honest about your feelings. And then you begin to remember Maybe it's your parents or your grandparents or some spiritual somebody in your life. Remember what they taught you. Remember what they modeled to you. Remember that you need somebody else. God never called us to be lone rangers. Remember that when you're feeling like this, it's spiritual warfare. It could be the hordes of hell coming against you, causing you to feel low. Because, you know, when we go through, we don't have to feel low and be broke down. And then most importantly, praise God. Remember, remember who he is. Remember his faithfulness. So when you, every time you feel the pain, lift your hands and bless God. Every time you feel the pain, if you got to call somebody and say, pray for me, but don't be uber super Christian. That is not the way the psalmist went to God and said, God, where are you? But I remember, I choose to remember, and I'm going to declare your name. And that's what I'm doing here. I declare the name of the Lord to you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I am proclaiming and declaring the word of the God of God to you. He promised, our Lord promised that he would never leave us and he would never forsake us. He did tell us in this world, we're going to have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world and we serve the conqueror. We serve the great I am. He is a good God. And can I tell you something? Just doing this video, this recording is making my heart lighter. Oh, my God is good. Your God is good. Listen, if you don't know Jesus, I want to encourage you. Lay your burdens down at his feet. I'm not talking about life's burdens. I'm talking about you. You, you are a burden. We are a burden to ourselves because we don't know how to do us. We need Jesus. We need our creator. I want to challenge you to repent of your sins. Acknowledge to the Lord Jesus that you have sinned against him and that you need his forgiveness and you are grateful that he died on the cross for your sins. And if you know Jesus as your savior, lift your hands and bless your God, bless the one who is your strength, who is your joy, who is your deliverer, who is your strong tower, who is your strength. Listen, he may be saying, my grace is sufficient. Let that be okay because he's good. He's a good God. He knows what he's doing and he never fails his children. So this burden that I have, this, this pain that I have, I choose to offer it as a sacrifice to my Lord. But what I'm not going to do is stop praising my good God. Thank you so much for sharing with me. You be blessed. You be encouraged. I hope I've said something to help you in the times when you're hurting. Because it's coming. It's coming. And this time that we're living in, it's going to probably be more than less. But that's okay. Because our God never forsakes his children. So don't li listen to the lies of the enemy that mocks and says, where is your God? You tell them your God is everywhere. And by the Holy Spirit, your God is in you. He's standing next to you and he's with you because he's faithful and he's going to keep his word. Or not he's going to, he is 
keeping his word. So you be blessed. Thank you for everything that body that likes and subscribes and comments. Thank you so much for following me. And you pray for me as God gives me what to say, how to share with his people. Be blessed. Matter of fact, Lord, I pray for everyone that's watching this. God, there may be people that are going to watch this that are feeling like me. God, their hearts are heavy. The pain is great. Lord God, I pray that the words you've given me to share are comfort to someone in their loss or the weight that they're carrying. Some are, are caring for sick loved ones. There are parents that are crying out to God for their children. There are, are, are husbands that are looking for jobs to care for their families. God, there's so much hurt right now. People don't know what they're going to do and they may feel like you have forsaken them. But God, I pray that they will read this Psalm 22 and feel your comfort, feel your arms wrapped around them. And I rebuke the devourer. I rebuke the voices and the tauntings and the harassings of the evil one that will cause them to doubt you and to turn away from you, lying to them that you have abandoned them. Lord, I silence that voice in the name of Jesus and I bind their minds and their hearts to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for being the greater one, not just in the world, but the greater one in us, in Jesus' matchless name. So you be blessed, you be blessed, you be blessed. I love you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.